Hey there, Mr. Redder here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled People Stories. Our first story we'll be reading today. My Karen wife gave away our cow. After that, 10,000 steps a day or else. And after that, am I the jerk for asking for a morning off for my baby on the weekends? Now for every thumbs up this video gets, one Karen does not get to give away anyone else's cow. I know I can't. I mean, who would want you, Reddit boy? So please smash that like button and subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. My Karen wife gave away our cow. My wife, who's 30, has a younger sister who's 28 who has four kids. My sister-in-law is a married stay-at-home mom and her husband, who's 31, works 35 hours per week. Money is tight for them, but they still go on annual vacations, drive newer cars, etc. My wife and I keep separate finances except for a joint credit card and household bill. I also do most of the grocery shopping. This is relevant for later. A couple years ago, I found out that my wife had been buying groceries for my sister-in-law on our joint card, about $150 to $200 per month for a few months. She said that her sister had come to her saying that they were tight on money and that she needed help feeding their kids. This is about a month after they had just gotten back from one of their most recent vacations to Mexico. I told my wife in no uncertain terms that I am not supporting their family. She argued with me, saying that we could more than afford it. I replied that I don't care if she wanted to support them, but that's her business. My wife stopped buying them groceries on our joint card after, but I'm sure she told her sister about it because sister-in-law has been standoffish since. In the last few months, grocery costs have been increasing thanks to inflation. As a cost-saving measure, I bought a whole cow for about $4,000, which works out to about $9 per pound and will last us more than a year, and my wife and I split the cost. Yesterday, I went to the freezer to pull some steaks and saw the amount of beef was visibly lower. I checked our security cameras and saw my wife leaving the house with a big box. I texted her demanding to know if she had taken a bunch of meat to sister-in-law and she replied yes. I grabbed sister-in-law's keys, we have a copy, drove to their house, knocked on her door, and when sister-in-law answered, I told her that I was taking back what my wife brought over. Sister-in-law protested, saying that I was taking food out of her kids' mouths, but I said I don't care. She already had one roast in the oven. I went to their freezer and they had about 40 to 50 pounds of ground beef, steaks, and roasts from our cow, including a couple prime rib roasts. I grabbed it all, except the roast that was in the oven, and I drove home. My wife yelled at me, saying she couldn't believe how selfish I was and that sister-in-law called her crying. She also said that she paid for half of it, and so she could do whatever she liked with it. I yelled back, saying, you don't get to decide to give away anything that we pay for together, and said that she acted like a sneaky thief for doing it behind my back. My wife is still angry at me, and says until I apologize to her sister, return the meat that I took back, and apologize for calling her a thief, she won't even speak to me. I may be the jerk because my wife pays half the groceries. Hmm, I think your sister-in-law is lying to your wife. They take vacations. How does your wife not see that she is playing her? Next, if she really is hurting for food, then there is help out there. Not the jerk, but you shouldn't have called your wife a thief. She was in her mind helping. His wife is stealing from his family. She is a thief. It's her family too. Then she shouldn't eat anything at home since she's giving away her share of it. If she wants to help that much, use her money. OP said they have separate finances, not with a household. Being charitable with someone else's money is so much easier. Not the jerk, but at this point, I would get another fridge and lock it with my own food and go separate on groceries as well. Not the jerk. I would have done the same thing you did. Your wife can only be upset with herself for doing what she did. Your sister-in-law is obviously not hurting for money as much as she says she is. She's just trying to take advantage of you to save some money for stupid things probably. Not the jerk. Both of you paid for it. It is assumed that it was going to be used to feed your family. OP's wife is free, of course, to help her sister, but she should not force OP to do it too. She forced him to do it when she took something both of them had paid for and gave it away. If she wants to help her, which is perfectly understandable, she should do it out of her own money, not with a joint bank account. If wife wants OP's help as well in this issue, she can try to convince him to chip in, but OP is free to say no as well. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or his wife? Please let us know.
Never let anyone use you for your money. If you do, the only person you have to blame is yourself. 10,000 steps a day or else. Years ago, long before smartphones or Fitbits, a coworker of mine, Bob, had a relatively mild heart attack. We joked in secret that it was caused by his wife, but the other secret is we weren't really joking. She was awful. She was just an intolerable person and no one liked her. I'm pretty sure Bob didn't like his own wife. If he did, it was probably Stockholm Syndrome. At any rate, when Bob returned to work, he returned with a pedometer clipped to his belt. Every day, Bob would walk as much as he could when he wasn't pinned down at his desk, but he was suffering and his work was suffering. As his supervisor at the time, I figured he was struggling with his recovery, so we just moved a lot of his work to others and left him with the cases he specialized in. That worked for everyone because those cases drove others nuts and he was a whiz at them. His other work was comparatively easy. However, at the end of his first full week back, the issue became more clear. I overheard Bob's wife going off on him in the parking lot because he didn't meet half of his step's goal. Turns out, the pedometer didn't come from his doctor, it came from his wife. She was demanding that Bob increase his current around 4,200 steps a day to somehow 10,000 steps a day. This will read at least 10,000 at the end of every workday, or it'll be your head, were her words. Now, Bob was a tall guy with a long stride, so she was somehow expecting him to fit in over six miles of walking during his workday while recovering. But you know, since he had had a heart attack, maybe she was just looking out for him, right? Nope. His doctor had actually cautioned him against overdoing it. He was only supposed to be walking one and a half miles a day and not all at once. But his wife wasn't having it. She demanded more, and he tried, but wasn't doing so well. After another week of this and another chewing out in the parking lot, we developed a plan. Bob's pedometer just sat on the corner of his desk while he was working. If anyone had to walk down the hall or to the other building, they had grabbed the pedometer on their way out of the office. Bob did have to tolerate another couple of chewings because we ramped him up to 10,000 steps instead of just jumping straight there. We figured that would be suspicious otherwise. In the end, Bob got his 10,000 steps every day. Well, Bob's pedometer registered over 10,000 steps every day, and almost one-third of them were actually his steps. Bob was overjoyed to have the help, and we were all willing to keep the secret because we were frightened of her turning on us. Teamwork makes the dream work. Am I the jerk for asking for a morning off for my baby on the weekends? My wife and I have a six-month-old baby girl. She's mostly a stay-at-home mom. She works two half days a week, and her sister watches the baby. I work full-time and go to school one day a week. We've always had an arrangement where she takes care of the household duties, cooking, cleaning, and now baby care, while I happily support her monetarily. Honestly, we're both living our dream life, and my wife does an absolutely spectacular job taking care of me and our little one. On the weekends, we share baby duty. We usually make sure each of us gets our own alone time to do whatever we want. However, our girl has hit a little bit of a sleep regression, waking up every two hours. Since my wife feeds naturally, she's always taking care of the baby full-time overnight. She's a light sleeper and unfortunately has insomnia, whereas I'm a deep sleeper and wouldn't wake up for baby cries anyways. Recently, my wife has been asking me to wake up with the baby both days on the weekends so she can get an extra hour of sleep. Baby wakes up around 7 a.m. I get the baby dressed and take over for that hour. But sometimes, I want to be the one that gets to sleep in an extra hour. I brought this up to her, and she says while she's happy to let me nap during the day, she really needs that hour because she can't nap like I can. We got into an argument about it, and she said I'm being very insensitive when I know she is very exhausted and can't nap during the day, and she struggles going back to sleep every time the baby wakes up. But I'm exhausted too. Work wears me out, and school days are long, and I sometimes want the hour in the morning. I don't want to spend my off time napping, I want to play video games and chill out. I've gotten mixed opinions on who's in the wrong here, and if there even is anyone in the wrong. Am I the jerk for asking us to share mornings off for sleep? You're the jerk. If she's taking all the night duty because you don't wake up, then you get the morning duty when you do wake up so she can catch up on her lost sleep in the night. You want a morning off, give her a night off. Oh goodness, you're the jerk. She's up all night. She does not get breaks like you in the week. She's asking you to get up at 7, a defined time. Go to bed earlier if this is an issue. She's surviving. 
I doubt she's living her dream life if this small request has been so poorly supported by you. You're the jerk. You don't think she wants to just chill out and do something on her own time? She's working too by not just going to work but also taking care of the baby. The least you could do is give her some time to sleep in. She's right. You can nap and do whatever. She can't. And unless you're going to offer to take over the feeding through formula, the only time she gets a break is if the baby is sleeping or she's off to work. Give up your extra hour of sleep. Give it to your wife, who does so much. I needed nighttime support from my partner when my child was a newborn. He didn't take it serious, and it took more effort from me to wake him up to help than it was to just do it myself. I stopped feeling like a human. The resentment never went away. We divorced when the kid was two. Oh look, another useless dad. What a surprise. What is it with you dads thinking just because you work some laid back joke of a job that you don't have to help with the baby? Newsflash, pal. This isn't the 1950s anymore. And just because you're a guy doesn't mean you get to be a lazy bum around the house. This is why I just had surrogates for all three of my kids. There was no way I'd end up with some lazy bum who refuses to help around the house and demands to be treated like some sort of a king when the truth is he's not even a peasant. I feel so sorry for your wife and I hope she divorces you ASAP and finds someone who actually respects her. How can you call OP a useless dad when he's A. Working a full-time job to support his family while his wife only has to work two days a week and B. He's also going to school to build a better future for his family. It seems like some of you think the dads in these stories should just shut up and do whatever their wives tell them to, regardless of how they feel about it. Communication between couples is important, and both sides should be able to share how they feel about something, then work out a solution together. Some of you just seem so bitter and like you're just looking for someone to lash out at. I'm no therapist, but being as quick as y'all are to lash out at these OPs, particularly when they're dudes, you might want to speak to a professional. I can't imagine you're in a very happy place to be so darn mean to people you don't even know. How dare you try to diagnose me? You have no clue what you're talking about, and honestly, you're just proving my point. Why do guys always feel like you have a right to tell others what you think is wrong with them? You're basically telling me that I have mental issues because I just pointed out how useless this sorry excuse of a father is. I was fortunate enough to not know my loser father when I was growing up. My mom did an amazing job of raising me, no thanks to that loser. I do hope OP's wife leaves him so that kid doesn't have to see how pathetic he is. As I said before, the things you say and the way you say them seems an awful lot like projection of how miserable and unhappy you are. I feel bad for you and the rest of these Reddit people who think the way you do. And since you wanted to assume I was a man, I'd like to inform you that I'm actually a woman. I'm married to a man who works full time so that I can stay home and raise our two daughters. My husband and I get up around the same time on the weekends, but if he ever asked to sleep in, the only thing I'd ask him is what time would he like me to wake him up. If you don't appreciate the man who works a full time job in order to provide for you and your kids, what can you appreciate? You're the jerk. Your wife does this five out of seven days a week. You can handle it for two. This phase will pass. Just put up with it for now and be a good husband. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or his wife? Please let us know. So many of these stories just make me so glad that we don't have kids, Reddit boy. My cousin thought she was being so clever. It did not work out for her. A good few years back, I was about 24 to 25 years old. I went to Cyprus with my grandparents to visit relatives. My grandparents originally came from there and moved to the UK when they were like 16. My cousin, 14, female, also came along. Now, it's important to mention that we're Greek Cypriots. Certain things are expected when we visit relatives, such as helping out with things if we can and offering our help for whatever our host might be doing. It's also worth mentioning that I have a sight problem, but I'm extremely independent in spite of it. So we were visiting relatives and every time I offered to help out, either taking dishes into the kitchen, bringing them out of the kitchen, washing up, even getting a glass of water. I kept being told to sit down. They could handle it. I didn't understand why, as I'm perfectly capable. I thought it might have to do with my eyes. One day, we were visiting a great auntie of ours who owns a little summer home by the sea, not too far off from where we were staying. Now, when we visit this auntie, I always go swimming. She's literally not even a couple of minutes away from the sea. 
Now, as I went to offer my help to my great aunt, I hear my 14-year-old cousin talking to her in Greek. Another important note, I can't string together a sentence in Greek. My father is English and had something against us speaking Greek. But although I'm not a fluent speaker, I can read, write, and understand Greek. My family doesn't know this. They assume that because I'm not a fluent speaker, that they can basically hide their conversations between other people. My cousin was telling my great aunt how clumsy I am, how stupid I am, how I'm a little soft in the head. She was saying it in Greek. She thought I couldn't understand her, but I knew exactly what she was saying. Even if I couldn't string sentences together myself, I knew what she was saying about me. I added two and two together and realized my cousin was very obviously telling all my relatives this. She did it because she thought she'd get praised if she helped bring out the food without me. I was angry, but I knew the perfect revenge. We ate lunch, and after we were finished eating, my great aunt asked my cousin for help to take the dishes in and do the washing up as she'd been on her feet most of the morning preparing the food. My cousin looked at me, knowing my great aunt couldn't speak English, and said, Hey, OP, auntie needs help taking these plates in and doing the washing up. Because now she was bored and expected to run off to the beach and leave me doing the work. So I looked at her and said, But I'm too stupid and clumsy and soft in the head to help auntie out. Besides, she asked for your help, not mine. She went pale, realizing I knew what she had said. But she doubled down. I helped bring everything out. You could help take it all in. I laughed at her, picked up the book I had brought with me, and got up from the table, grabbed the towel I brought with me, and went to walk off. My cousin started whining to my grandparents that I wasn't helping her. My grandmother looked at her and said, You made your bed. Now you lie in it. Your cousin caught you lying about her, and now she can go to the beach while you help your aunt. My cousin went completely white then. So I went to the beach, swam for 30 minutes, then chilled out on a deck chair reading my book under the shade of a nice umbrella. By the time my grandparents called to me that we were heading home, my cousin had spent all of it helping to wash up and dry things and put them away. She hadn't gotten to be lazy and go to the beach to enjoy the sea. I could have helped her. I simply decided that I wouldn't as she had never earned my help. Since then, every time we went to a relative's home and she was asked to help, I washed with a smirk on my face. To this day, I'm 37 this year. I still won't help her. She made out I was incapable to people. So now she suffers the consequences. It's the malicious compliance that keeps on giving to me. Am I the jerk for not allowing my daughter's half-sister to spend Christmas with us? My ex-husband and I got divorced seven years ago. We share custody of our 13-year-old daughter. He got married and has a five-year-old daughter with his now wife. His daughter would spend time with my daughter regularly. They adore each other, but she doesn't come to my house and they rarely meet up there. His wife has been diagnosed with cancer and has started treatment recently. The other day, he came to drop our daughter off and asked to speak to me. He talked about his wife's circumstances then, how his family won't be able to have a Christmas celebration this year. He said it wasn't fair for his daughter and asked if I could include her in my family celebration. He pointed out how the girls will have a great time together bonding and making memories. But I said I was sorry, but my family's traditional celebration is a sacred thing, and I do not feel comfortable including anyone else. Plus, it would be awkward having her in my home. He said that his daughter may not be family to me, but she sure is to her half-sister. He asked me to stop and think about what's best for the kids here. I suggested he take his daughter to spend Christmas with her grandparents. He said his parents and him are no contact, and tried to cut the conversation short, but he stopped me and started going on about how cruel it was for me to decline to include his daughter who's already having a hard time adjusting. I saw that he was beginning to cry, so I stepped back and said I was no longer feeling comfortable having this conversation. I asked him to leave, and he did, but still texted me asking me to agree to let his daughter come spend Christmas, even offered that he stays away if that'll make me less uncomfortable. I said no, and now he's calling me selfish and unfeeling. A point worth mentioning here is that my family is going to attend, and they said that they too will not feel comfortable in this situation, thus I said it would be awkward. Not the jerk. That child doesn't know you or your extended family, only your daughter. This could be her last Christmas with her mom, and he's wanting to take that away from her. Even if it's just the three of them in pajamas eating cookies all day, he's the jerk. Not the jerk. 
Why can't she spend Christmas with her mom? If it ends up being terminal, wouldn't it be better to be with her mom and dad than with her dad's ex-wife's family? Why does he want his five-year-old to spend an important holiday with people who don't have a relationship with her except for her sister? Very weird. Not the jerk. I don't understand why exactly his daughter would have a better time at your house instead of with her father. Like, just because they're not having a Christmas celebration doesn't mean they can't spend time together. This sounds really fishy to me. Not the jerk. Don't do it, sis. Not your monkeys, not your circus. It's not your fault they're going through this, so please don't feel bad. Before you know it, he'll be trying to pawn his kid off on you when you owe him nothing. Tell this loser if he needs a daycare, you'll email a few places to him that have good ratings. So sick of these men trying to pawn off their kids on us because they're unfit to be parents. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or her ex? Please let us know. People suck, bro. People really suck. Am I the jerk for telling my girlfriend she should give up on seafood because I'm allergic to it? I, 27 male, am allergic to seafood. Unfortunately, my girlfriend, who's 25, adores it. Ever since we got together, about three years, she's made an effort to eat it as less as possible, which I appreciate. However, I wish she would completely stop, to be honest. The other day, she went out with her friends to a restaurant. When she got back home, I tried to kiss her, but she stopped me and told me that she had just ate seafood. I got a bit disappointed because I was looking forward to spending some time with her and I told her as much and then I said that maybe it would be better if she had just give up on seafood altogether. I know she likes it but sometimes it can be an inconvenience to me and I feel like she should be willing to give up on such a small thing for us. She got upset about my request and said that she loves me but that she's sorry because she's not giving up on eating it and that lowering the amount of time she does it was already enough. Her family eats seafood often and she grew up eating a lot of it, so I kind of get why it would be hard for her to give up on it, but I think that if she cared enough, she'd be willing to do it. So, am I the jerk? Come on, you're not even trying. Of course you're the jerk. It can be an inconvenience to you. Someone call a wambulance. You're the jerk. A whole food group isn't a small thing. This is crazy controlling, not about love. Love was her stopping you from kissing her. Love is realizing she gets to enjoy certain food sometimes, even when it's inconvenient for you. If you cared enough, you'd be willing to continue the working compromise of her eating it without you. If she cared enough, she would be willing to do it? That's a toxic mentality. If you cared enough, you would be willing to not kiss a couple of nights per year. You're the jerk. You're the jerk. This is coming from someone with severe shellfish and seafood allergies. My husband still eats seafood. He lets me know he did and I would never ask him to give up a food group or food he loves. It's not her job, even if you were married, to control your allergies. She told you she had seafood. It's not like she's eating it and kissing you. Your allergies or mine do not dictate anyone else's diet. Not the jerk. Unpopular opinion, obviously, but my boyfriend is allergic to peanuts. So once we got serious, I stopped eating peanut butter, which I ate a ton of before we got together. What everyone here is missing is that if you love someone that could be seriously hurt by you eating a certain type of food, you should want to stop eating it because it could put them in serious danger. Why do I feel like if OP was a girl who wanted her boyfriend to stop eating something she was deathly allergic to, you all would be singing a completely different song? OP, regardless of all these people insulting you, I just want to let you know there are girls out there who would actually put your safety above their desire to eat a certain type of food. Best advice I can give you is to see this as the red flag that it is and end things ASAP. You can find someone who will love you the way you deserve to be loved. Am I the jerk for threatening my husband to stop paying for him if he helped his sister? I, 34 female, have been married to my husband, 33 male, for six years now. We have two kids who are four and one and a half. I come from money and also make about 10 times what my husband does. When we first got together, I noticed that his family takes advantage of him financially. He's a very kind man and the perfect person to have as a partner and father. To get around the whole greedy family thing, I offered to pay everything when it comes to us. House, living expenses, medical expenses, vacations, clothing, etc. Honestly, I wouldn't even mind if he wanted to be a stay-at-home dad, but he loves his job and I love to see him happy. Early on, some of his family tried to get money from me. But when I brought up a contract and a notary, they backed off. 
I'm now considered that rich daughter-in-law who happens to be a cold-hearted jerk, and honestly, I don't care. My husband's whole salary ends up going to his family, paying almost everything for his parents. Somehow, one of his siblings is always in an emergency, or a cousin needs help with their business, even though they're all firmly middle class with good jobs. Before anyone asks, when it is a true emergency, I always give money with no expectation of getting paid back. Now to the situation. We're visiting his family for Thanksgiving. We thought it better to go a few days earlier. They live in a mountain town. It's gorgeous this time of year. I rented us a cabin and paid for five first class tickets. Mine, his, the kids, and the nannies. We arrive at the airport and surprise, surprise, his sister just happens to be on the same flight. I call BS. It's obvious he told her when we would be going and she decided to get a ticket for the same flight. We greet her. Then I hand the kids to the nanny and send her ahead to the lounge because I had a feeling about what was about to come. Then sister-in-law has the audacity to ask me to upgrade her to first class so she can travel with her family. Kudos to my husband. He shut her down before I could. Then she goes and asks us to switch her ticket with our nannies. I told her point blank that I wouldn't be doing that, that my nanny is needed to help with the kids. I'm useless on a plane because of nausea and the meds. My husband can't realistically be expected to take care of two kids on his own. She starts complaining and making a scene. I just turn around and start walking towards the lounge. My husband follows me about 10 minutes later. Apparently, he tried to pay for her ticket upgrade, but it's a full flight. So he tells me that he will be switching with her. Here's where I might be the jerk. I told him that he knows I can't help the nanny during the flight. And if he was going to leave this poor woman to her devices just because his sister can't live within her means, then this will be the last time I will be paying for his tickets ever again. He texted his sister to tell her that apparently he can't switch tickets with her, but he is pretty upset. So, am I the jerk? Edit. So, this blew up. Expected a couple hundred judgments at most. Thank you, everyone. And since most people seem to be hung up on it, when I said my husband can't be expected to take care of two kids on his own, I meant logistically. Two rows of seats with a wide gap between the seats and between the rows. Each kid, who are four and one and a half by the way, would need an adult to sit next to them. I'm useless, can't even open my eyes because of the meds. I usually need someone to help me. We're both perfectly happy and capable of taking care of our own kids on our own under normal circumstances. You're definitely not the jerk and your husband is a major pushover when it comes to his entitled family. OP, that he is, but he's a pushover when it comes to everyone. I'm not kidding when I say that he gave the coat off his back to a homeless kid once, almost froze before he got back home. One of the reasons why I love him. He does sound very kind and generous, and it's really unfortunate that it's often people like him who are seen as willing targets by others. It's one thing to be kind and generous. It's another to do so with other people's money. In this case, the ticket was purchased for him. He had no right to trade it with his sister. Not the jerk. You've got to break this pattern of behavior somehow. Why on earth would you want to sit with your sister-in-law while your husband sits alone in coach? Utterly ridiculous. Karen's sister-in-law gets banned from our Thanksgiving this year. My mother-in-law and I do not get along, but I'm really proud to say we called a ceasefire for the sake of my husband. I know this might sound childish, but it took blood, sweat, and tears for us to even be in the same room. Mother-in-law did some awful things to me and it took work to forgive her. I did some things I'm not proud of, but at some point I realized I was just hurting my husband. Mother-in-law was an absolute monster at our wedding. She made planning a nightmare. She embarrassed me at my bridal shower and she wore something that could have passed for a wedding gown. Right after the wedding, we had a financial setback and had to stay with mother-in-law. I know this is petty and not defending it, but I was still upset about the wedding. Mother-in-law was having some guy over and demanded we hide ourselves away. She really, really liked this guy, cooked a fancy dinner, and spent like an hour getting dressed. So I messed with the dinner she cooked and poured flour on her when the doorbell rang. Again, I'm not defending it right now, but we were in this awful war mindset. Yeah, mother-in-law kicked us out of the house for that stunt, and eventually I grew up and reached out to make peace. That was two years ago, and mother-in-law is still with him, and they're getting married in January. I've apologized to her. She's never going to apologize to me, but we've made our peace. We bought our first house recently and had a large dinner party. Also, I'm hosting Thanksgiving this year. 
Mother-in-law said I can have it because it's the worst holiday. But hey, it's a start. Everyone knows how excited I am about finally having a house to host in. At the dinner party, mother-in-law was getting a lot of attention for being engaged and people wanting wedding details, and sister-in-law decided to give a toast about how she knew her future stepfather was the right guy because he stuck around after that incident, and she told everyone about it in detail. And he calmed mother-in-law down and made her dinner while she washed the flour off. I get sister-in-law's point, but it was humiliating. Also, it paints an unfair picture because she left out all the crap mother-in-law has done to me. Most of my guests were horrified. This was supposed to be a nice adult evening and she's bringing up how immature I was right out of college. Mother-in-law laughed. Father-in-law laughed because he is her ex and loves the flower story, but everyone else was in shock and it made the vibe really weird. I called sister-in-law out after the party and she laughed and said it was a funny story. I told her it was humiliating and she said, well, it was true. I said, as of right now, she's banned from the house because she disrespected me in my own house. This means Thanksgiving since it's coming up. Mother-in-law asked me to reconsider because, well, you did do that. And because sister-in-law doesn't have anyone else to spend Thanksgiving with. I stood firm and now mother-in-law is saying she will stay home and cook for sister-in-law. My husband is mad at his mom for picking sister-in-law, but said he will back me. Sister-in-law swears she was just kidding and I'm overreacting. You're the jerk. You sound mean. You did a thing that obviously everyone knows about, but you obviously aren't over it and are somehow using that to exclude your sister-in-law from a family gathering. Also, regardless of the rift between you and mother-in-law, you were living under her roof and tried to sabotage a date that turned into a lifelong relationship? Come on, grow up and get some perspective. You're just asking for future wars with that attitude. Everyone sucks here, but in degrees. Regardless of what mother-in-law did, your behavior was extremely childish. You poured flour on her because of her wedding behavior when she was putting a roof over your head? You were lucky she didn't grab something and defend herself. Frankly, that they could turn it into a funny story and laugh about it is a good thing. Instead, they could still be telling people what an awful jerk your husband married. It's embarrassing, yes, and sister-in-law was not thoughtful to repeat it, but banning her from the holiday table was overdoing it. Of course mom is going to celebrate the holiday with her daughter since you banned her. Your husband shouldn't be surprised, neither should you. Support our channel by joining as a member today and we'll give you a shout out in our next video. Or come watch this video next, you won't believe what Karen does in that one.